okay good evening friends uh, i hope this this evening is going to be the uh, best evening of this year because today we have a very special and if i say the word special it will be less we have a very uh, important and uh, honored friend with us so our today's topic as we have already discussed the importance of bioinformatics and the biostatistics in the everyday life so uh, basically um, i can introduce him he is dr dipnil chakraborty he has done his msc in statistics from iit kanpur and completed his phd from university of texas dallas and presently he is a post doctoral fellow of minnesota and those who are um, not accustomed with this name the university of minnesota is uh, one of the greatest university and in 1855 it was 1851 around it was established and uh, as per the Uh, record from the internet there are 23 nobel laureates from this university so i myself feel honored to have a person with uh, this very small platform so uh, if you go go for the details you can have so many things so without further delay i want to hand over this entire meeting to him uh, dr chakravarty and he will start with his basics and the today's topic uh, the statistics and biostatistics because this uh, let me tell you the purpose of this meeting that uh, many of the students during the 12th get confused what to take stats or bio and uh, you know there are not uh, huge opportunities in india to have a statistics and there is a no channel to orient this uh, interest from statistics to application of those things because those are very dry subject uh, represented in a dried manner and uh, you know the biological information is offlet is uh, there is a plethora of information if you take the simpler dna molecule it is filled with a millions of information so to deal these things we need bio statistics and uh, without any further delay i must uh, welcome him warmly because there is minus 70 degrees celsius so i must welcome him very warmly and uh, okay i think you can proceed uh, let me uh thank you asker for the warm and overwhelming introduction uh yeah it's it's around negative 17 degrees celsius over here so good morning from here from minneapolis minnesota so i will i will talk about biostatistics and i will just give an overview of what the subject is what it does and and what are the opportunities in india and usa to pursue this subject as a career opportunity so without further ado uh, let's start so what do we know about biostatistics so we know this term and this is not much difficult to make out from this term that this is just an application of statistical methods uh, to the topics of biology so uh, what we do is uh, we conduct biological experiments we collect the data we analyze those and most importantly in biostatistics we try to interpret these results to reach to a potential solution so we want to conclude the what are the factors that is causing a disease or or any any biological phenomena so this is the main main and in in a nutshell um, the the idea of biostatistics the most important part that biostatistics plays is in public health so the school that i am in that's also uh, the school of public health so it's been largely used in the development and application of statistical reasoning and methods to address and analyze to solve problems in public health healthcare biomedical clinical and population based research so all these kind of researches the need analysis of data and biostatistics comes handy in that so that's the that's the uh, main place of application of biostatistics uh now i will move forward to uh, why i chose this subject and what are the opportunities of bio statistics in 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 india and usa uh, but prior to that i will just give the motivation of choosing this subject so what does bio statistics how how choosing bio statistics will help you to contribute to greater good so as a statistician so i i did my phd from university of texas at dallas uh, in theoretical statistics and even prior to that my masters was in theoretical statistics and uh, i felt that something was missing so i i was doing statistics and it was just playing with numbers but i didn't get to uh, apply those in real life situations 
But in biostatistics, whenever you deal with the projects, you crunch numbers, you analyze the data, and, and you build models. So in a way, you're working uh, on a project by which you can contribute to the greater good. So it, it prepares, um, you, you can prepare public health officials to address chronic disease uh, for the, um, this kind of epidemic. So we, we all know that we are dealing with COVID-19 situation, the COVID-19 crisis and health officials and everyone around the world, the medicine companies, they're all dependent on, on biostatisticians. So they are, they are the persons who are holding trials, um, dividing the people in different kind of uh, placebo and, and uh, the medicine groups. And they, they're giving the conclusions. Also, if you want to give back to your local community and the global public health as a whole, then pursuing biostatistics, I think, is a worthwhile choice. And now, of course, with every choice comes a job market because at the end of the day, you have to make money, right? So it has been poised to be a lucrative and fast-growing professional field. And I will come to the Forbes reports, but here's an highlight. As per the Forbes report, those who complete a graduate degree in biostatistics can look forward to an estimated projected job market growth of 18% in a year. Yeah. And also the demand for the biostatisticians is expected or projected to be uh, go up by 1.46% over the next few years. So that's the that's point. Um, if people are concerned about choosing biostatistics as a career opportunity. Now, we, we all know about Forbes and they do this kind of uh, analysis based on um, the pay scales. So they collect this data from a compensation data website called pay scale. Uh, so this uh, analysis, this is again a statistical analysis uh, so they collected the data from a mid-career, uh, for mid-career, uh, they collected this mid-career data on 45 uh, master's degree um, that, that we have in United States. And then the ranking that, that they did, that considers pay growth from early to mid-career of those holding each of these degrees, as well as job satisfaction, stress, meaning derived from the work and Bureau of Labor Statistics project employment growth of jobs associated with each degree to determine which fields are promising graduates the best collection of factors, both tangible and intangible. So they did this whole analysis and that will give you a glimpse of where biostatistics stands as a career opportunity. So the mid-career median salary for those with biostatistics degree is around $104,000. So that's, that's a very good start. Also, it gave a high marks for job satisfaction and meaning as well as 151%. So around 1.5 times pay growth from early to mid career and 18% projected job growth. And, and, and that makes this degree to go to the top of the list. So this is this is considered to be one of the one of the best career opportunities. And and as I am in this um, field, I would say that they're quite correct. Uh, and also, uh, the top five degrees this year promise higher job growth than in recent years. So that's that's a plus two for everyone. And even, even compared to the statistics, compared to the field of statistics that's placed in the second place, um, biostatistics, uh, um, biostatistics projects around $112,000 uh, as a median mid-career mid salary. So that's, that's a, a good plus point. I would like to just draw attention to the opportunities we have in India for biostatistics. So uh, to be honest, I didn't have any clue about all these universities prior to Googling them. 
but uh, there are universities in uh, Mahatma Gandhi Kashi with the Vid Varanasi, Kanu University, Sri Venkateshwara University um, in southern part of India, Manipal University in Karnataka. Uh, I, I knew about uh, Indian Statistical Institute or ISI in Baranagar, Kolkata. So they have a few opportunities of biostatistics research. Uh, ISI Delhi also have uh, opportunities on biostatistics. IIT Mumbai also have a bit of biostatistics. Uh, University of Cal Calcutta in West Bengal, they offer a one-year diploma in health statistics. It's not exactly dealing with and researching with uh, biological data, but they do a diploma on health statistics. So as, as Vaskar already mentioned that uh, there is a plethora of opportunities in biostatistics, but they are limited in India. And I will come back to that point, but let's, let's first see what are the opportunities in United States. So these are the universities. Of course, Harvard University is the best of the best universities. And this is ranked uh, as one in, uh, according to the biostatistics programs. Uh, we also have University of Washington in Seattle. That's uh, also a top university. We have John Hopkins University. That's really good for research was one of the pioneers. Um, and you can see that uh, there, are, there are several universities, apart from these also, there are several universities which specialize, uh, does specialization in biostatistics. They have master's program, they have PhD program, and they have postdoc opportunities in biostatistics. So you can see uh, my university, University of Minnesota in Twin Cities is listed as the seventh one. So this is one of the top 10 universities in, bio, in biostatistics. So one of the good things about doing biostatistics in here that I have found is that uh, these schools are connected to the School of Public Health and they have their own hospitals. So they kind of don't have to depend for the data for others. So if, if you need, if you have, so data is one of the main things that you need in current uh, world, right? So data is equivalent to money. Um, if you have the data, you can unlock the rim of uncertainties, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if, they, if you have hospitals, if you have public health system, then you have data and then you can do your own research. So you don't have to depend for the data to others. And that's one of the plus points that these universities have. They have their own hospitals. So they have thousands of data. So why, why I chose biostatistics as my, my career opportunity. So as Vasco said that uh, University of Minnesota Twin Cities is, a, is an old university. It was found around 1851 or something like that. Uh, they have their school of public health since 1944. So that's a long time. So that's more than 75 years. The motto of the school, they, they, the goal is to create a world where every community has the opportunity for a healthy life. And I was inspired by the school's motto to discover new paths, seek alternatives, push harder and create inventive solutions in our commitment to make health a human right. So that's a big statement. So all they have done or all they're doing is for a better future of, for everyone. Right. When, when I completed my PhD or, or when I was completing my PhD, I should say, uh, I thought that and my, my PhD is on a very theoretical topic. Um, it's on uh, missing data. Uh, I was thinking that what, I'm, what am I contributing to the society? What's my contribution to the society? What, and, and to be honest, the thing that motivated me to do statistics in my uh, early school days or college days was that, um, and, and what, what separated me from mathematics was that uh, statistics had a lot of uh, applicability. So the application we had in statistics, that motivated me. And when I finished my PhD or while I was finishing my PhD as I told, uh, I was thinking that what am I doing that can be applied to a real world scenario. Um, though it was, 
I, I could use certain part of this to, to realize scenario, but it was not a significant one. So I wanted to shift to a part where, where I could like contribute to the society. I, I could do something for the public health. And in the meantime, I did a project in UC San Diego. So University of California, San Diego. I, I collaborated with their uh, bioengineering lab. And then I got this feel that if I, if I do biostatistics, then I can do something for the society. And then I found this opportunity. I talked to the professor and uh, he, he told me that he has a project that uh, deals with real life data uh, for patients on Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and, and that really motivated me and I chose this as my career opportunity. Just to add a bit, um, I, I was, uh, to make this presentation, I was going to, through the website of University of Minnesota. I'm fairly new here. I have been here for the last three months as a postdoc. Uh, so I, I found this programs for UMN. Uh, they have this India programs, UMN. So there is one as uh, NIT public school, uh, winter school, and there is another public health experience in Calcutta. So they have both these uh, uh, opportunities and they're uh, probably uh, exchange student opportunities and they're, they also have available scholarship. So I will, I, will, uh, I will provide this link to Bhaskar and probably he yeah. will add this to somewhere in the description of the video. Uh, definitely. Okay. So, so this is my small talk about uh, by statistics and the overview. Thank you, Bhaskar, for having me and, and organizing this wonderful series of uh, lectures and, and uh, talks. I really enjoyed watching those on YouTube. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. And again, Happy New Year 2021 to all okay. the viewers. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I want to end up this meeting with a short uh, brief summary of this. That, uh, uh, our intention was not to uh, discuss like a mean median mode or something theoretical statistics today just uh, if our beginning is uh, flawless and if we understand why we are studying something then we can uh, proceed in a certain way so our today's motto was to just uh, understand this particular subject why to take this subject because it is not just as he said uh, it is not just theoretical based you have a lot more application of it so you can also make money out of it so it is uh, financially lucrative and the uh, next part is that um, in the introduction part we have understood how and uh, how to apply this concept and how to gain knowledge from the different universities if it is not possible for you at this moment to leave india in india also you can learn some some uh, a basic concept and later you can uh, move further so i think uh, this uh, introductory video will definitely help you to understand this particular uh, the new domain of science and later you can take your decision in your life. so i can i must thank simply thanking you is not a, um, uh, a effective thing so i in, in any case i thank you to waking up in the morning and uh, <laughs> giving a talk uh, on it so thank you so much again. thank you for having me thank you so I will uh, end up the meeting for everyone.